In this video, we actually have news about a possible new Tomorrowland. This is absolutely outrageous, okay? Absolutely outrageous. We have not heard anything about Tomorrowland probably for about two years since the last D23, but this time might be different. We're gonna talk about it up next. I got the Italiano with me today. Let's go. Welcome aboard, everybody, to another episode of OG55. I got my co-pilot here with me today, George the Italiano. George, welcome back, sir. Thanks for having me back on, and it's always a good time uh, talking uh, Disney parks, Disney studios, all that good jazz. And uh, this one in particular is quite interesting. I don't think we, none of us saw this coming, but that Disney just kind of, I mean, Disney never really officially announced this, but I mean, you know, there's like, talks among the community that you oh, know yeah. tomorrowland could finally be getting some tlc yeah yeah no it's interesting it, it's very interesting there's so, there, there does seem to be some smoke you know and where there's smoke there may be fire and that's kind of tied into who actually broke the story mr mondo from five fires but shout out to mondo we love mondo man mondo's a Absolutely. great guy and so is danny we love those with those gentlemen but um but yeah i mean this is this looks like there might be something to this so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and dive right in i think it's kind of fascinating all right, so this is from our friend uh, Mondo over at Five Fires. You know how we got to do it, George. You know how we got to do it. Fire flame, flame, fire flame spitter. Yeah. Fire flame, flame, fire flame spitter. Oh, yeah, Mr. Five Fires. Okay, now this is courtesy of Mr. Five Fires. This, this, uh, he dropped this last night, like 9.30 at night. Uh, he says here, rumor, okay, Construction companies have put bids already for Tomorrowland construction projects. First time hearing about this, but what could it possibly be for? A people mover? Maybe just a land refurb? Something finally being done in the launch bay? What are your thoughts? And then he commented underneath it saying, hearing that there is strong validity to this rumor. Now, that's what he said last night. Also a friend of the channel, Frederick Chambers, also a very reliable source here, says, as far as I'm aware, New Tomorrowland is happening, okay? It is happening, but don't get too excited, okay? We're looking at an overhaul of existing infrastructure, not a rebuild. Think of it as a higher budget redo, but, but on the scale of Tomorrowland 98. So this is fascinating, George. Let me go ahead and kind of read you the subsequent uh, tweets. He, he kind of gets into a little more detail as to what we can expect, and then we'll talk about it. Sounds good. He says over here, uh, we will get at least one new attraction, okay? Star Tours and Space Mountain will remain most mostly unchanged. Okay, that, that's a given, I think, pretty much with the Star Tours and Space Mountain. Uh, massive overhaul and retheme for Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters. Thank God for that. And Galactic Grill, okay? Hopefully they... <laughs> Hopefully they overhaul the food in that place too. Uh, Tomorrowland Theater to be removed and replaced. Fascinating. Okay, this is more involved than I was ever expecting. I got to say, Autopia will get its electrification. Okay, electric cars and overhaul. The only question left: if there will be enough budget to finally tear down and replace the people mover. No matter what, changes are coming to the world of tomorrow. And then it says here, he finally, he concludes here with, these are just the rumors and rumblings I heard at the beginning of the year, but none of it is real until we get a reveal at D23. Worst case, we will only get the electrified Autopia, but the land needs major infrastructure repair in the near term. Something will happen. Go I, ahead, think it's, I think it's quite interesting of how he worded that and ha how he said, until we get the reveal at D23. He didn't say maybe, he didn't say possibly, he didn't say if we do. He said, you know, how, how, do, you, how do you say it? Until we get, Until a, reveal. We get a reveal. At yeah. D23. So that kind of sounded more kind of definite, so to speak. Kind of, yeah, absolutely. And the final thing he says here is Disney Imagineering has been given a mandate. Finalize Tomorrowland so they can finally move on to Disneyland forward. 
This will be the last major project for Disneyland with all future projects being capacity expansion across the resort. Now that makes sense because Disneyland Forward, even aside from capacity, Disneyland Forward is a very IP heavy sort of thing. You know, it, whatever they end up doing, it'll be either Frozen or Pandora or Zootopia or these big IPs. Tomorrowland is kind of, it's a hard land to put heavy hitting IPs in right now because the big IPs, Star Wars and Marvel are kind of already spoken for. So it's kind of redundant to put more of those in this land. Um, and there really aren't too many futuristic IPs that are on, on the same level as like a Frozen or whatever. So very, very interesting. But George, overall initial thoughts on this, man. I think if this rumor does come to fruition that it is true and we get news on this more in-depth uh, at D23, I, I think this was a long time coming. I know people are probably going to bitch, moan, and complain about it, that it's like, okay, well, this isn't the revamp that we wanted for Tomorrowland. But you also have to take into consideration everything that you just said. There's not a lot of heavy driven IP that's based off of, uh, you, you know, futuristic type space. I mean, yes, one can argue and say you have Wally. -E. You can say that you have um, the upcoming Pixar film Elio, but we really don't know how that film is going to do. Right. So you can't put all your eggs in one basket with that that IP until you actually see if it's worth something. Um, I know there was a lot of talks that there's possibility they may put in that Wreck-It Ralph um, attraction, which it's going to have to be something of that nature for that new um, attraction that Frederick was talking about. But as far as the overall aesthetics, I think that's the main key goal for Tomorrowland. It's not necessarily the attractions. It's the overall look of the land that needs the work. Yeah, it's the aesthetics. Because for the most part, the attractions are pretty still well received. You know, you have Space Mountain, which is enormously popular. Star Tours, which is still very popular. Um, even After Blasters is popular, but they're going to be replacing that according to this, which might be the Wreck-It Ralph thing, actually. It's a, probably going to be the case. Um, you know, even things like Nemo and Autopia. I mean, these are all fairly popular, you know, attractions still. What, what Tomorrowland really needs is a cohesive, aesthetic vision you know and and that's what i hope they really focus on the most um they got to get rid of those people mover tracks you know frederick was saying he's not really sure they're going to do that i think that really brings down the land you know especially when you have a land based on the future an optimistic future you know we're talking disney here right and then you have these abandoned you know people mover tracks and it just looks unsightly you know they're all they're gathering leaves and you can see them from the monorail it's, it just looks really really bad they got to tear those down i can't imagine it taking uh you know costing too much and you know in terms of disney money you know to do that kind of right. thing but overall i'm excited um i just hope they do it right you know when he says here think of it a, 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 as a higher budget redo but at the scale of tomorrowland 98 you know, anything comparative to Tomorrowland 98 for me worries me because I don't think that was necessarily a huge success story. I mean, that, that was kind of a big black eye for Disneyland. I mean, that, that's kind of like the um, I kind of put Tomorrowland 98 in the same category of like light magic and things like that. You know, it's not exactly a huge success story. Right. So that kind of worries me a little bit. But we need we need all the love we can get for this land. I just hope whatever they do. I hope, man, I just hope they don't half-ass it, though. You know, whatever budget they have, you got to do it right because we don't want to be here again in 10 years. Correct. Yeah. They they have to justify of what they're doing. It has to be aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Y you want to still put love into it, but I do realize, you know, Disney's position that they want to get this done because, as, as he had mentioned, you know, with Disneyland Forward, you know, moving into the the pipeline with all those expansions and projects Tomorrowland wouldn't get touched probably for the, the next 20, 30 years. True. So they have to definitely do something, but you're right. They have to, if they're going to commit to something, they, they can't do it on the cheap side. And I know probably within that budget with this is probably going to go um, within the amount, I believe it was 30% of the, uh, the 60 billion, um, that Disney was investing into the parks because I think 30% of that was going to be for um, 
upkeep and maintenance and refurbishments and stuff like that. So partial of that 30% probably more so is going to go towards this. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. And it says here, this is kind of interesting, right? So he says a massive overhaul and retheme of Buzz Lightyear Astro Blasters, right? Mm -hmm. But then at the beginning, he said, well, we will get at least one new attraction. So I wonder if that's the same thing or if, or if we're getting a retheme of Astro Blasters and a new attraction on top of it. I think I think those were two separate things, the way that it sounded like to me. So I don't know if the new attraction is going to go where the Fantasyland a fantasy land, excuse me, the Tomorrowland theater is going to be because they're co completely going to be removing that. Um, I don't know how much square footage, you know, that could possibly make for a new attraction. I don't know if that would be, if they were to bring the people mover back, that would be considered the new attraction, even though it was already an existing attraction. I had mentioned about wreck and Ralph. That's a possibility. They may do something, maybe with Stitch or Wally. -E. As I said, they possibly could do something with Elio, but I don't know if Disney's going to want to take that risk yeah. of not knowing, you know, until the movie comes out. Um, but as far as with, with Buzz Lightyear, not even the outside of the building. I hope they kind of like upkeep the inside of that building because I don't know what it is. Every time I walk into that building, it literally smells like a men's bathroom in, in an outdated Chuck E. Cheese, like literally. <laughs> It's like, horrible. It's, it is. It's horrible. Oh, my God. Now, here's the thing, too. Here's the thing, too, is that with the um, – I'm really glad that they are getting rid of the the, uh, the theater. I got to be honest with you. Um, I, hopefully, it's replaced with something substantial like a dark ride if they could fit it in there. Um, something a little bit more um, – I hate to use the word timeless, but I feel like the, I feel like the Tomorrowland Theater is just sort of like – a very temporary thing. They just kind of throw throw various things in there. It feels very cheap. Mm -hmm. I hope whatever they put in there, hopefully an attraction of some of some sort, is a mainstay. You, you know what I'm saying? It's something that's going to be there for a long time and not a very temporary feeling thing. The other thing too is people. We I don't think we should completely discount discount the idea of the people mover coming back, because a lot of people say, well, there's no incentive for Disney to do it, right? But here's the thing. They kind of do have incentive for people mover because technically it's not an IP and I get it. Like, you know, Disney is all about the IP. I totally understand that. But a lot has changed in the re in recent years. Disney has now monetized attractions with this lightning lane stuff, right? Mm -hmm. You have an attraction, you bring up like a next gen people mover back to Disneyland. The, the, the locals, the magic key people, you know, the, the locals, I mean, the nostalgia is going to hit hard and you're going to, you're going to potentially make a lot of money because they're going to monetize that thing with lightning lane and all that stuff. Right. So you're going to potentially make a lot of money on that. So technically it's not an IP, but I think then the, for that instance, so with the people, people mover, I think there's enough nostalgia there that can drive a lot of lightning lane dollars and Disney might actually be kind of interested. What do you think about that? Is that a possibility or no? I, I think honestly it, it would. And to be quite frank, I think, Disney would then prove everyone wrong when they say, oh, we listen to the fans. You know, we do this for the fans while well, the fans are asking for the people mover. And it's to the notion that a lot of the, the people mover track really isn't in bad of shape as a lot of people think it is. It's you're, still you're you're right. We had a show. I think it was like two years ago. A gentleman actually DM me and he said he worked for a construction company, right? He worked for a construction company that was actually hired by Disney to assess the people mover track, the viability of the track. And he was saying to me, and I don't want to say the guy's name because I don't want to, I don't know if he wants me to say his name, but um, he was saying to me that it's, it's, it's doable. It's workable. It's not as bad as fans think it is. It, it does not need to be destroyed. They can ab absolutely retrofit that thing. I do apologize. George. I just wanted to bring that up. That was actually from somebody that was contracted out to even look at it. And he was saying, this is only a couple of years ago, saying it's actually in good enough shape to work with it. It does not need to be completely dem demoed, but go ahead. And I think it would actually save them a lot more money in the long run by revitalizing the people mover rather than rip the whole entire track out. 
and have to reroute maybe some buildings along with it. Like, why do that? <laughs> well, why do that? Right. It's, if it's probably, you're right. It's probably, it's probably more cost effective and more profitable, mind you, to bring the people mover back. Cause like I said, if you bring the people mover back, fix the track or retrofit it, whatever you got to do to it, you bring the people mover back like a next gen version of it. Now you're, now you lightning lane that motherfucker, right? <laughs> Okay. Exactly. And now you're monetizing that. So now you're making money. Now, if they just bulldoze the track, that's just that's just a loss for them. They just that's just costing them money. If you bring it back, though, you can potentially make a lot of money on the nostalgia. I'm telling As, you. Especially for the locals. Oh, dude, I'm telling you. The yeah. locals will pay for that shit. Oh, they will absolutely pay for that shit. Now, absolutely. Now, another question. D did it mention anything in any article or anything about the, the carousel of progress building? Um let me see. I believe he said here. Oh man, no, no. Um, Mondo in, in his tweet was speculating about that, but Frederick, it, when he talks about these details, doesn't mention anything in regards to um, the launch bay. So that'll be the big elephant in the room still. We just don't know. Um, I know that that launch bay now has a uh, DVC thing, doesn't it? Now, on the like a lounge or something. I think it's on the upper level. I believe, yeah. Which is probably why it's not mentioned here because they don't want to touch the DVC thing. Right. So I would imagine as cool as the new Tomorrowland is and it's exciting news, um, I think Launch Bay will still be the Launch Bay, likely. And, and we might get a, a paint job or some kind of new aesthetic to it, but I think it'll largely stay the Launch Bay, which is a shame because there's a lot of potential with that property. It's a massive piece of real estate. Yeah, it really is. I mean, to unless that's where the new attraction goes, maybe that's the hint to it. Oh, that's true. Actually, that's a actually that's a great point, George. Like, where else would you put it? I mean, maybe that's what it is. It's either going to be maybe Launch Bay or maybe where the where the theater is getting where, where the theater is now. You know, because we have to remember too when Joe Rody was still part of uh, Imagineering uh, full time. <laughs> um, yeah. We saw that clip on in the Imagineering story when he was kind of fiddling with the notion of a new tomorrow, a newer Tomorrowland. And he picks up the uh, that building, you know, in the in the model. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. I mean, check that out. I forgot what episode it was. Was it the first episode? No, I that think. would be. I forgot which I one. I forget which one it was. But it was it, it was yeah. Joe Rody, you're right. He was looking at a model of Tomorrowland, and he took the Launch Bay building from the model and took it off the off the board. So they were playing with different things with that. So we'll see. We'll absolutely see. Um, Autopia getting electrified and getting an overhaul. That's exciting news. I mean, I mean to some extent, I mean, you know, I, I think it's more exciting a, as one piece of the puzzle with everything else going on than it is in and of it by itself. I know I'm probably in the minority with that, but I really wish that Disney would just gut that attraction. That is oh. a huge piece of real estate that they could do some, anything with. Oh, you're singing to the choir. Here. I wish they would do it too. I mean, I really, I was really hoping that they would just get rid of it. I understand it was an opening day attraction. It just, it's just, even electric cars aren't futuristic. Everyone, I mean, I, I live in LA. Okay. I see the cyber trucks freaking everywhere. Teslas and all these electric vehicles are everywhere now. It's, it's totally like, it's today. It's not the future. You know what exactly. I'm saying? Exactly. I don't know, man. Yeah. And, and like you said, it takes up a ton of room, a, a, a ton of acres, they could do so much with that land. I I would get rid of it personally. Um, I don't know. Uh, we'll, we'll see. You know, I, I just, oh God, yeah. But it doesn't look like they're getting rid of it anytime soon because whatever the sponsor is for Autopia, the new sponsor, I'm sure they're going to have a deal for like, you know, five, 10 years or whatever, yeah. you know, just like Chevron did um, or Honda. And, and, then of, and then of course too, basically what they're saying is they want to get this done before Disneyland forward. So if it's not in the plans to remove Autopia right now, we're, yeah, we're pretty much, it's pretty much safe to say we're, we, we're going to have that ride for another good couple decades. I well, think. Yeah. Yeah. And the other story is Disneyland forward because we're talking about Pandora and stuff, right? Mm -hmm. According to Frederick, they want to do this first. So when, when is, when is Pandora going to start? Because right. that that's going to be part of Disneyland Forward. I mean, that was confirmed by Bob Iger. He did unless, say, unless this is going to go hand-in-hand hand with the Eastern Gateway. So while the Eastern Gateway is happening, 
that's when this is going to be happening. Okay. And then, you know, it takes maybe like three years for Eastern Gateway to get built. And then by the time that's built, this will be done. And then they can start on like Pandora. Yeah. That's and what I'm thinking. It's another three years for Pandora to get built. So you're looking Pandora's probably like six, seven years out. And I think that they're going to want to kind of stretch Pandora a little bit more, I think, because of the films coming out. You know, they could still, you know, kind of showcase the way of water. But you also have to think Avatar 3 comes out. What it what is it? Uh December um of uh yeah, gosh, I should have had the year. Was it this year or next year? I'm not sure. For I know it's 3. December because I think that's the time slot they're going with right now with it, but I'm not sure when it comes yeah. out. But even with the newer, so we don't even know what's even going to become with, you know, the newer storyline where maybe that will tie into a California th- a theme. It could. Um, yeah. I mean, that's the thing a lot of people don't realize is that there could be a California equation here in these future movies that we're not aware of, you know what I'm saying? And there might not be, I don't know, but I mean, you know, we just have to keep that, that, that as a possibility here, yeah. you know, they're aiming for like uh winter 2025. Oh, okay. So pretty soon, like a year and a half ish, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay. So this is interesting, man. This is interesting. We haven't talked about Tomorrowland in a very, very long time. I thought this would not be even in consideration right now because of Disneyland forward. Like I said, Disneyland forward is really attractive for Disney because it's, they can really mine a lot of this IP stuff, like the big IP, like frozen and like, you know, Tomorrowland doesn't really have that potential. And I get it. This is going to be a much smaller budget than anything we see with Disneyland forward. I think. Right. But it is interesting. Now I will say this, when it comes to this right here off to the Mm. side, they have, they still have the construction wall here. Right, mm-hmm. because I think it's the mechanism for this guy right here, this bad boy, the astro Bla- the astro orbiter. Right? Please, please, no matter what they do with Tomorrowland, please address the entry with this stupid thing on off the left. Maybe we'll get the rocket jets back in, uh, you know, on the uh, people over uh, loading area. I really wish they would. I think this is such an eyesore. It blocks everything in its path. It reminds me of how the Sorcerer hat was at Hollywood Studios, that it just blocked, like, uh, the the Grauman's Chinese Theater. It was it was an eyesore. These kind of these kind of things remind me of like the the like annoying kid sibling that just like jumps in front of you and it's like, look at me, look at me, I want attention, and you just want to push them the fuck out of the way, you know? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And here's the thing too is that they might even have to move it. I don't even know because you know this thing is sitting there. The the mechanism is sitting there off to the left hand side. You know, they might see it's a cost thing, right? They might see, well, moving it to the moving it to the to the where it was before might actually end up being a little bit more cost effective than trying to hide this stupid mechanism, you know, and trying to trying to do that whole thing. I don't know what the what the what the figures would be, but they're gonna crunch those numbers and they it might even be worth it just to move it and not deal with that mechanism. So we'll see. Um, but that was a big thing. I mean, a lot of fans, I remember I've been in the community a long time, I always say that, but I was watching the Tomorrowland 98 construction, like with um, the late Al Lutz, you know, mm-hmm. he, he would do a lot of updates on this stuff. I was, I was on the message boards and stuff, his website and all that. And he was talking about this and fans back then hated this, the Astro Blaster clogging up the walkway. This has been a thing that people have hated for 20 plus years. So if they fix it, I think I'll go a long way. A lot of goodwill with fans, you know? And I tell you, dude, if they, like Frederick said, if they announce this at the D23 fan event, which we will be at, by the way. We will be there. You know, if they announce this, I'm telling you, the fans are going to go nuts, man. The yeah. fans are going to go nuts for a new Tomorrowland. I mean, I don't know the ambition level here, but they'll probably show us some level of concept art. But this has been on the fan wish list for a very long time. Yeah. This is going to be huge. And this is exactly this is what we talked about. Daddy Josh, he needs a big win at this expo, not because of the fans necessarily. For his own, mm-hmm. cor- for his own, um, um, a- you know, aspirations to go up the ladder. He wants to be the next CEO. He wants to hit a home run. He wants all the headlines to be Josh hit a home run at the expo. How do you do that? You announce a new Tomorrowland, bro. That that's like the easy low hanging fruit, dude. And, and this should be the event where they just knock out announcement after announcement after announcement because Lord knows we haven't gotten a decent announcement in five years. Right. So 
there's no excuse to just say, oh, yeah, here's two or three announcements and we're all good to go. No, 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 no. This is you you have to you have to uh, you have five years worth of announcements that you have to pour out into this one night. You have two and a half, possibly three hours to get all this in, Josh. So, you know, get your textbooks ready. Yeah, yeah. And I think he will just if not for anything else, just because he wants to be CEO. And he wants to look good. He cannot afford another disappointing expo where fans are on Twitter and on social media saying, well, tomorrow drop the ball again. He can't afford it, dude. He can't afford it. Now, here's the thing. I think he will deliver this time because he has to. I'm very confident he will. If he doesn't, then he's really... Then not even he, just not even just for CEO, but just for his current job as chairman of Parks. Is yes. In jeopardy. Exactly. I mean, he I, I, he's not a stupid guy. I, I'm I'm certain he's going to deliver at least the best that he can with this expo. But here's a question. Will will they follow through with the projects? That's a whole other ballgame. As we talked about that, they need to give us some assurances at this expo that these projects that they're promising us are actually going to happen. Because right. they've kind of broken the trust with the fans a little bit here. You know, we had the Avengers E ticket, which has been on the back burner now. Now, I get it. Look, to be fair... You know, I want to be fair to Josh. I don't want to just, you know, pile on. To be fair to Josh, I know. This, please do. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but to be fair though, like it, that was announced in 2019, just months before the pandemic. Right. Mm -hmm. The pandemic hit. There was a whole thing. We had a CEO change in that whole mix. We also had um, uh, the MCU sort of fall grace a little bit, right, with their films, you know, and all that. So there was a lot of mo there was a lot of spinning plates with this whole situation. And I understand the why behind it. But the reality is it still broke trust with fans. The Avengers E ticket is sort of like a, a running joke now. So they got they gotta they gotta really sort of prove to the fans, hey, when we say Pandora, we mean it's coming and it's coming in the next few years. When we say Zootopia, it's coming and it's coming in the next few years. And we promise you it's gonna look what we're like what we're showing you. You know, they can't do this whole like pull the rug out from underneath us again like they did with Epcot, you mm -hmm. know, and I don't even I don't even necessarily hate the Epcot changes. I think a lot of fans are kind of being a little ridiculous with that, but it is very different than what was promised. Exactly. That's what it is. When you show a side by side comparison of what was promised to us at these events and then you start to kind of snip away at the budgets and it's like, okay, let's take this out. Let's remove that. Let's swap it with this. And then we kind of get a watered down generic version. Then in that case, then I would rather them make the announcement, but maybe not really show any kind of concept art. If you're, if you're planning on reducing what it's really going to look like, only show that concept art. If that's exactly what we're going to be getting. Yeah, or pretty damn close. Or close to it. You know, as, yeah. as close as humanly possible because you can't afford to give us this big thing and then you, you, you whittle it down to something else. You know, it's just not – we've had too much of it. He he needs to really come through. So we'll see. And he might. He absolutely might. We'll see. But uh, it's going to be interesting. But a new Tomorrowland, very, very exciting. And I'm telling you, man, if they announce that people mover, that room will erupt. Oh, Yeah. I mean, the people mover, people are going to be going nuts, bro. Uh, th that's all he would have to mention for the new Tomorrowland. If we got nothing else and it's just, yep, we're going to change the overall appearance of the land, heighten up the aesthetics. Oh, yeah. And by the way, the people movers returning. I guarantee, I guarantee you people will be standing on their seats. Oh, dude, it'll be crazy. It'll be absolutely crazy. It'll be like you wouldn't believe. That would be an insane reaction. And he need and he needs that kind of reaction. And like I said, don't count it out. I'm not saying I'm like, I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna say, oh, I'm banking on a on a people mover. I'm not gonna say that. I'm not gonna, I'm not going all in on a new people mover. I don't, you know. But I think there is a possibility because you have to remember these attractions now are now monetized through Lightning Lane. They're monetized mm -hmm. things. They've managed to monetize this stuff. So you're you're gonna bank on people's nostalgia. You know, it's money through lightning lanes and all that stuff they're gonna make on a new people mover. A lot of money. I'm telling you, a lot, a lot of money, right? Hold on, we gotta we gotta do a money drop, man. We haven't done one in a while. There we go. There we go. Just like Lalisa said, a lot of money. A lot, a lot of money. But we'll see, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. This is gonna be a crazy D23.
Yeah, it really is. And I, I think also, too, this is kind of off of Tomorrowland, but I think also we'll probably get a uh, an opening date for uh, Tiana's as well. Probably. I would assume so, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, it's going to be wild. Absolutely wild. That's the whole thing, too, with Tiana's. I'm really curious how the whole queer country kind of re- I don't even want to call it a reimagining. I don't even know what it what it's going to be, but us, you know, the the because they're really digging it up. It's oh not, yeah, that whole area is like getting a whole new. So apparently, that's going to get. Yeah, you're right. It's it's like not a not a revamp, but I guess it's probably going to get. I guess some updated new look to it. You know, it's got to. I mean, they're just digging it up way too much. You know, as I so said, that, and obviously the hungry bear is going to be sticking around. Um, I think it'd be funny if it reopens to like the hungry gator or something. I was going to say, you've mentioned that before. I actually really like that idea, dude. I think that'd be kind of cool as a, as a way to kind of like reimagine it a little bit. The hungry gator, I think would work really well. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. You know? Just, just, just don't get rid of my, my spicy honey chicken sandwich. That's all I care about. Oh man. Those are so good. Yeah. You got me into those. Those are fantastic. <laughs> if you like spicy, that, that's a, that's a great little meal. Hungry bear has pretty decent food. Surprise. Yeah. yeah. For like yeah. a, like on the fly kind of thing. Yeah. It's, it's, it's decent. Now he, Frederick did mention that the galactic grill. He did mention the grill is getting, is getting a, 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 re, a redo as well. So that'll be interesting. So I wonder, I wonder like when they say that, do they mean like a new menu, like a new aesthetic to the building or is it going to be like a new kind of like a, even though they have like the tables and chairs, but is it going to be designed differently? I wonder. Let me see. Hold on. Let's go ahead and reread what he said here. This is from Frederick Chambers, which, by the way, you got to follow Frederick on on Twitter. Um, he's Hellsman Freddy H E L M S M A N Freddy F R E D D Y. Great guy. Really knowledgeable. Check him out on Twitter. Make sure you give him a follow. Um, so he it says here. Massive overhaul slash retheme for Buzz Lightyear, Lightyear Astro Blasters and Galactic Grill. So he included that in with Buzz. So it's going to get a massive overhaul and retheme. Okay, now I'm okay. Now that I'm actually looking at the wording, yeah, retheme of Buzz and it's Galactic Grill. It, it's a retheme. So they're going to take. I'm um, maybe they'll take for Buzz. Maybe it'll be the same vehicles and same mechanism with the guns, but a totally new IP in there. IP. And probably wonder, record ralph I'm that's thinking. what i'm thinking and then for the galactic grill rather than it be galactic grill because it's right off on the back side of where astro blasters is if it is wreck it ralph i wonder if that will then be revamped to kind of be inspired by wreck it ralph they might have like the same kind of uh menu like with burgers and fries and sandwiches and stuff but it'll be designed more geared towards wreck it ralph yeah yeah probably Interesting, man. You know, it's funny because when they announced this Autopia electric car thing, a lot of people were speculating, a lot of friends of ours were speculating too, um, is this indicative of a bigger Tomorrowland project? And I was not on that train at all. I was like, nah, man, this is like, this is, they're phoning it in. They just, this is something they have to do because of California law, right? They have to right. go electric and they're doing the bare minimum. I, wow. man, I guess I was wrong on that. It seems like at least according to this rumor, apparently they do have... Wait, so, yeah, I really, did, I was really not on that train of a, of a bigger Tomorrowland overhaul, but apparently it might be in the cards. We'll we'll so. see, and literally, uh, by the on the time of this recording, we're probably looking at in two days. Will be, I think, almost exactly a month to the day when we get wow. those announcements. We'll see. And uh, th thanks again to our to our, our good friend, uh, Lucas Kim. Um, yes. Like, if you haven't seen our D23 video that was dropped uh, this morning, check it out. Lucas is amazing. He he, he gifted George and I uh, tickets for the expo. We were unable to get tickets initially because Disney's website was so bad, <laughs> you know, yes. and Lucas really came through. So, again, a big shout out to Lucas Kim again. Thank you, yes, Lucas. We absolutely. appreciate you, brother. Big, big shout out to Lucas and D23. Do not give us trouble. Do not give us <laughs> issues. I guarantee you, you do not want to mess with this Italiano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll be there too. If you got, if you got, if you guys and gals um, see us at the expo, just come by and say hi. We'd love to see you. You know, it'd be a lot of fun. 
But uh, George, if you could remind everybody where they could find you on social media. Before, oh, actually, before we do that, I do want to remind everybody, the memberships are live now. We, You can become a member. We already have a few. A few members have already joined. Um, so yeah, you just go to the main OG55 YouTube page. Right next to the subscribe button, there's a join button. Join right there. And actually, the price monthly is lower than we initially thought. It's actually... I, I'm. We, I made it four ninety nine instead of the five ninety nine. So four ninety nine will get you all like a lot of membership exclusive content that we're planning on doing, as well as member exclusive live streams. So we have a lot planned. Actually, we're actually going to be dropping our uh, first members only video pretty soon in the coming days. So we're we're hitting the ground running. So yeah, make sure you uh, become a member if you can. And uh, we'd love to see you over there, you know. And and definitely uh, just keep in mind that the stuff that we do uh, for the members, it's going to be in a completely different style than how we do um, our regular daily uh, videos here on OG55. So it'll be a little bit more in depth. It'll be a little bit more spicier. Um, and then we'll also be doing a lot of... Um, on location uh kind of uh videos where you know og and i might take on a uh an eating challenge you know we might try like different uh snacks or desserts or beverages and kind of um kind of review them right there on location you know we may take some suggestions and ideas from our from our members and uh yeah so it, it will be definitely also still be reporting on a lot of stuff as it goes yeah. along but um yeah if you're not a member you know, definitely uh, consider it. Again, it's only four ninety nine a month. You know, just it'll just cost you just one Starbucks drink. That's all it'll do for you. Yeah, right. Well, the way Starbucks is going, that might not even be a full Starbucks drink. Yeah, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's crazy. But yeah, it's going to be a lot of different kind of stuff. You know, and we'll have like obviously we're going to have like um, content like this where we talk, but it might be a little bit more. Um, like George was saying, maybe a little spicier, maybe even a little bit more intimate, like getting to know us more and stuff like that. Like really conversational, like talking to OG and Italiano, like getting to know them as getting to know us as people and everything like that. And we're going to have like, you know, on location videos, things like that. So there's a lot of like kind of experimental stuff we'll be playing with. So it'll be a really, really good time. And like I said, the the memberships started today they're they're open now officially right and mm -hmm. we're already going to be dropping a members only video in the in the coming day so we're hitting the ground running baby ground running but uh george if you could let everybody at home know where they could find you on social media sir absolutely you can find me on x formerly known as twitter at disney george you can also find me on instagram under the disney italiano and of course you can find me right here on my home base at orange grove 55 with citrus corner with that sweet, juicy, but sometimes sticky Disney news and info. There it is. Coming down below. Very exciting news from Five Fires. Mondo from Five Fires. Rumor is construction is, is they're looking for construction companies to do this new Tomorrowland. Um, you know, uh, uh, Freddie or Frederick, he kind of confirmed it too. Or not, not confirmed it, but basically saying he's been hearing the same thing. Two sources are saying this, so this is very, very interesting. We'll see if it happens. D23 in just about a month, so we'll find out very, very soon. But I want to thank everybody for watching. I also want to thank everybody for supporting the channel. It means the world to all of us here at OG55. Thank you so much. Comment down below, and until the next time. <laughs>